Hey, Redeemer, welcome to our Wednesday Reflection for this, the 26th of January, 2022. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about someone whose feast day came up in our Lesser Feasts and Fasts calendar. Uh, if you remember, you know, when we first started doing these um, Wednesday Reflections, um, I did a lot of recognizing the the calendar of saints, the especially the lesser feasts and fasts. Um, and we kind of got away from that as I started doing more and more uh, things that were on my mind for the week or topical things that were coming up as far as the, the needs and, and, and events and calendar happenings of the church. Um, and so uh, the Wednesday Reflections took on a lot more of topical uh, uh, non-liturgy or calendar-based musings. Um, but I figured this would be a good time to just go ahead and, you know, revisit that that calendar setting that I, at least I started out using. Uh, because this is an important uh, person to talk about. We're talking about Florence Lee Tim Oi. Um, and I'll get more on her in a second. But um, basically, if, if you're unfamiliar with what the Lesser Feasts and Fasts are, This is an example of an older version of the Lesser Feasts and Fasts. And what it is, is it's basically kind of a, a fill-in space for those uh, people that we remember and name and hold special uh, remembrance for, um, uh, lesser saints, if you will, um, that aren't, you know, the big ones like, you know... Uh, Nicholas or Peter or Andrew or Thomas or, you know, um, you know, all those big names that we mention um, in our Book of Common Prayer. Instead, these are lesser known saints, like maybe, you know, uh, uh, William Laud, Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Thomas Cramner, people who aren't um, as big a names in, you know, Christianity 2,000 years ago. But they at least get their um, their names recognized uh, from more recent history. Um, and the Episcopal Church has several versions of their lesser feasts of their calendar. Um, you know, uh, one edition was called uh, um, Holy Women, Holy Men, which is a reference to a scripture line. Um, uh, then there is the Great Cloud of Witnesses, which is another uh, updated collection. So instead of using the title Lesser Feasts and Fasts, um, it was given a, a new edition was given that name. Um, there is a 2018 edition of Lesser Feasts and Fasts that wasn't able to get um, f officially recognized by general convention in time for them to conclude their business. And so it's just sort of been laying in limbo, waiting to get officially voted on. Um, but all I have to say is that today is the lesser feast, um, or is the, is the feast of Florence Lee Tim Oi. And if you've not heard of uh, the Reverend Florence, or, or I guess Mother Florence, uh, that's understandable. Uh, it's not a name that, that pops out a lot of times. But she is uh, notable for being the first woman uh, ordained in the Anglican Communion. Um, in, in America, we didn't uh, ordain women until 1976 or 77, I forget. Um, so in the Episcopal Church, we started ordaining women in the, the, the mid to late 70s. Um, you know, uh, Florence was, was ordained as a uh, deaconess in 1941 and was later uh, ordained a priest in, I believe, 1944. Um, let's learn about that. Um, so Florence Lee Tim Oi um, lived in uh, Hong Kong. And um, when she uh, visited the ordination of a deaconess, a deaconess is, is an order that has kind of become obsolete now, um, but it was, it, was a, um, it was a way for women to be involved in the work of the church in a capacity, and the deaconess, it, it was kind of like a deacon, but also kind of not, that's a whole other kettle of fish. But in 1931, Florence uh, went to the ordination of a friend of hers, Lucy Vincent, to be a deaconess at St. John's Cathedral in Hong Kong. Um, and 
when the preacher asked for women to give their lives to work for ministry, uh, this inspired Florence. Um, so she eventually went to uh, Canton Union Theological Seminary um, and then uh, worked for two years at All Saints Church in Kowloon, um, helping refugees in Hong Kong who had fled mainland China. Um, uh, Florence was then sent by Bishop Ronald Hall to help refugees in Macau um, at the Macau Protestant Chapel. Um, and then she returned to Hong Kong in 1941 um, to be ordained as a deaconess um, by Bishop Hall. Um, eventually, the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong happened. Um, and uh, so it made, it made it impossible for Anglican priests to get to... Um, it made it, it made it impossible for Anglican priests to get to neutral Macau, um, and there was no Anglican priest in residence. Um, Lee was, despite not being ordained a priest at the time, given permission by Bishop Hall to give the sacraments to Anglicans. Essentially, if you're in Macau and you're cut off from any ordained uh, presbyters, any priests. Um, the ordained deaconess was given permission to administer the sacraments. Um, Bishop Hall explained to the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, I have given her permission to celebrate the Lord's Supper. If I could reach her physically, I should ordain her priest rather than give her permission. I am not an advocate for the ordination of women. I am, however, determined that no prejudices prejudices should prevent the congregations committed to my care having the sacraments of the church. So obviously a, a somewhat dated opinion uh, of the time, but also I, I, I appreciate how this is um, that uh, Bishop Hall explained that on the one hand he wasn't in favor of ordaining women, but on the other hand he was also much more concerned that the members of his flock were uh, getting the sacraments of the church. And so the sacraments trumped his uh, hang-ups about female ordination, which I, I, I respect that, you know. I, I, I you know, I believe in, in ordination for women completely, and I, but I also got to respect, like, you know, the sacraments are more important than, than our gender hang-ups. Um, anyway, um, in 1944, Lee traveled through Japanese-occupied territory to the small town of uh, Hingswing, Hingsing, um, and was where it was occupied by the uh, yet it was unoccupied the Japanese, and, and met with Hall, um, and he regularized her administration of the sacraments by ordaining her as a priest. So he, you know, he, he made good on his word uh, that if he was able to get to her physically, he would ordain her, and he did. Um, Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, confided to others his conflicting views, but felt to make public word, to make a public stand against it. So he felt conflicted, but said, but he had to do something in opposition. Um, it was to be 30 years before any Anglican church regularized the ordination of women. So to avoid further controversy, she resigned her license, although not her priestly orders, after the end of the war. So what did Florence Lee Timoy do? She, she basically gave up her license to administer the sacraments uh, in that diocese. So, for example, I, I, I'm, I am licensed to administer the, the, the sacraments um, in the Diocese of Mississippi. Um, if I go to another diocese, like, you know, Tennessee or Texas or, or I'm, I'm whatever, um, I'm not lic I have to ask that bishop for a license to administer the sacraments in that diocese. Uh, there are exceptions to be made if you're coming in for like a weekend wedding or whatever. But if I'm, if I'm you know, moving to a new location and setting up shop, um, you know, within uh, 30 days or 60 days, I have to... Uh, it, um, 
I have to notify the bishop and get permission to be licensed. Um, and likewise, if, if, there, you know, if the bishop could remove my license uh, to preach and, and administer the sacraments, um, that, that means I couldn't do the things a priest would do, but I would still be a priest. That's essentially what, what Florence did. Um, she basically gave up her uh, license to operate um, as a priest in the diocese, but I mean, she's still ordained as a priest. She wasn't uh, defrocked or or have her uh, or censured in any way, um, officially. All that to say is that um, after the communist government um, uh, stopped closing churches, uh, that ended in 1974. Um, uh, Florence went to the mountain. She would have to go to the mountains to pray uh, uh, because during that whole time she was working in farms and factories, had to go to political re-education because uh, she was designated as a counter-revolutionary. And so during that whole communist-occupied China portion, um, she had a real struggle and would you know, go to the mountains to pray, to be absolutely isolated. Um, and so uh, when um, later eventually when Hong Kong ordained two further women uh, priests um, in 1971, uh, Florence was officially recognized as a priest, priest in the diocese. So she was ordained in 44, but wasn't officially recognized as a priest within that diocese until 1971. Um, she was appointed an honorary uh, uh, assistant priest in Toronto in 1983, where she spent the remainder of her life. She passed away in 1994. So um, Florence had an amazing life, um, a very hard life, um, but she set an amazing example for women across the Anglican Communion and for uh, wom women clergy everywhere. Um, you know, I applaud everything that, that she had to go through to, to get the work done. And you know, what is the work? It is spreading God's, uh, Christ's good news and spreading God's love um, through uh, counsel, contemplation, prayer, and, of course, the sacraments. Um, that is what the priest does, um, is administer and, and, and oversee uh, the sacraments. And so I, I got to, you know, um, I really am, am thankful for Florence's uh, witness and example um, but also for, you know, uh, stubborn white dudes, you know, for either changing their mind or willing to, you know, work with uh, pragmatic solutions to circumstances like Bishop Hall did in Hong Kong and uh, Archbishop uh, uh, Temple did um, later on, even though I wish their, their examples had gone a different way at the same time, you know, uh, it's understandable for the time. But luckily, we're not in that time. There is still certainly uh, gender bias toward uh, clerics today. Um, I was reading, all, uh, I'm on a, a Facebook group about, uh, a clergy Facebook group and from varieties of denominations. And, uh, you know, uh, male bias in ministry is real, and I wish that people didn't have some kind of weird hang up that a woman uh, cleric will be doing their uh, family member's funeral. Uh, get over it. Anyway, um, if you want to talk to me more about that issue, please feel free. Um, but anyway, that is uh, a basic overview of the life of Florence Lee Tim Oy. Um, I did get this information off of Wikipedia, but I've, I've read other uh, articles about uh, Florence, and so... Um, it, it stands up. Um, this was just a much easier way to uh, have everything all in one place. So my apologies for using Wikipedia. Um, Y'all be well, um, and I will have more updates and information on our upcoming annual council meeting. Um, I'll be uh, uh, updating social media regularly uh, from, from that uh, virtual meeting, um, and we'll let you know all of the... Uh, important news to come out of that uh, that whole business meeting. So 
Thank you. Uh, keep all of the delegates and alternates in your prayers. And as always, dear ones, God bless.